well, with that being said, I'll go ahead and start intros so that I can throw some punches and see what comes of it. So we'll go from there. All right. Well, he makes dentistry into retail and makes us all question our need for detail. He makes it always profitable, even if his work environment is unconscionable. He <laughs> is the Tex in Texas, so you better respect us. For him, there is no better state, but compete and he'll treat you like a racked Kuwait. He's waiting for the recession because that's when he grows his profession. You see his main chromosome overexpression is the ability to find a practice repossession. So no matter if he wakes the next morning not knowing what happened, he's just celebrating <laughs> that the economy has flattened. If it's a practice that's bread and butter, he won't need a rubber. This Texas boy will mount <laughs> and be sure. You didn't go he will get, he will make sure he'll get a discount. Who wrote this for you? <laughs> he, he's our I, liberator, I, pomp and circumstance incinerator, the friend to all whose dreams are never small. Please welcome the rainmaker himself, Trade Tip. Dude, that's <laughs> awesome. Who's writing this for you? That's not yeah. Dwight that I know, Dwight. You channel a different no, more it's AI. It's AI. It's AI. Oh, yeah. It's got to be AI. Oh, I mean, you it's get... a cooler Dwight. This is too cool. <laughs> you know what, Man. Craig? Maybe this so, is I'm what's making go, me rough. Craig, I wonder if, well, there'd be no way to do a, a, a roast, but like I had AI guys, like I had oh Craig God, on his mouth crazy. on the floor. I did an AI episode with Craig yesterday and I had Craig's mouth on the floor. And then I showed him later. I was like, hey, watch this press release. And it wrote a perfect press release. Like, just it's just crazy. Anyway, sorry, Dwight. I didn't mean to get, jump in your intros, but Trey, you saying that AI was like, actually, it probably could do that. It could write your roast. They talked about it in that roast. last all in podcast. They did? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, GPT 3. Sure. Yeah. It's crazy for sure. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Dwight. Very, very good. What was the context of the rubber again? I want to hear that line I can again. Reread that piece. No problem. Yeah. yeah. It applies to so many things, Craig. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure it does. If it's a practice that's bread and butter, he won't need a rubber. Yeah, this no, Texas boy will mount and be oh sure he'll God. get a discount. Dwight, this is so not you. Listen, right. to all who know Dwight Pecora before this transition, I'm sorry. The transition. <laughs> <laughs> well, for that matter, I'll respond to Craig by saying he's a trustworthy man who never puts his head in the sand. He's the dreamer with the anxious demeanor. He always claims he lives in the tropics. This helps Florida seem more exotic and less of a retirement home for neurotics. <laughs> if, he, if he feels it, he believes it. He says he loves that Florida is his home, although he gets his dopamine from his phone and carries the record <laughs> for the daily screen time of any human ever known. Talk about his network and you can expect him to go berserk since name dropping is his style and he doesn't care that it makes his argument juvenile. His main <laughs> fear is that we are all unclear, but my main fear is that he never read the topic to this pod and instead we will talk about his Cabo stories he <laughs> chanted or if his political buddy DeSantis. He's the most likely to spill beer on a waiter and accidentally hire underage labor. He is our trailblazer. Please welcome to the pod. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I do get my dopamine from my phone. That's so funny. That's so Powerful good. Up. So good. And anyway. last but not least, he's obsessed with control and loves the energy at Cabo's Marina Soul. <laughs> <laughs> He's to bulletproof as Pablo is to narcos. He's the man who puts the narc in the narcissism. If it's not his idea, he won't like it until he later uses it and copyrights it. He coaches us all to scale. But if you grow bigger than him, he won't even respond to your email. We are always on his timetable, but maybe it's just the bedaffodil. He's our core that makes us all want more. By core, I mean he's the gravitational pull that takes away all of our souls. He brings us together and pays us as slave labor. He's the introverter, Craig's life narrator, and one more beer instigator. Please help me welcome the dictator, Peter. That Holden. was your best. Oh, that's the best one ever. <laughs> best what, one I love ever. this new side of you. It's so, yeah, that's you, you, true. Like, you, you know, this is a whole new Dwight. I don't know what to deal with you. Something happened. You know, you're not. You, know, you just made me write intros, and then I just got inspired to be say what I'm thinking. I know, That's but what it's Trey just, always wants. Not... Be scared of what we're actually thinking. Just keep asking questions; it'll come out. That's wonderful. I got <laughs> someone's got to roast Dwight in the process. Yeah, man, Bring it's it. gonna it's gonna fall flat on his face, man. It's gonna be hard to compare. I know. <laughs> this, I feel like that Eminem rap battle in Eight Mile. I just don't even know what to say. <laughs> That's served. Oh, you can do that. You can do it.
<laughs> I love it. Well, well done, Dwight. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, very well done. Very well done. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Can we Funny. take Peter's description and put it in his bio? On the <laughs> sure. I, I, actually, I actually do want a copy of that. One. I want a copy that of Peter's for sure. I'll awesome. send it out to you. Why, why am I likely to hire underage labor? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that one. It's no, no, you can't, the... <laughs> listen, L of one, you cannot dig into the. I know he's going to dig back into why? it. I just don't wait, understand. So wait, why? I, never... I can't stop thinking about this. <laughs> exactly. Tonight. Hey, Dwight, what did you mean by that? Yeah, it, he will straight up text texting. I can't, I can't sleep. Like, Dwight, I can't <laughs> sleep. You said something in my roast. Said... I just can't get over You it. said something in my roast that con concerns me. Well, today we definitely need to get started on a topic that's hitting a lot of areas right now. And I think a lot of, I don't know if y'all been hit up by a lot of docs talking about this one, but for sure, the medical loss ratio uh, legislation that's passed in Massachusetts, uh, first one ever, I'll do a quick little discussion about some of it in case if listeners don't know what's going on or what's, how this is going to impact us. But I find it interesting. I think it's important when we talk about these things, we're not normally going to drop legislation because it takes a while to get around the country but this is one that looks that it's got a lot of support behind and is yeah. it's starting to gain a lot of traction so it's worth discussing so <clears throat> essentially the affordable care act required health insurance uh to submit data on proportions of their premium revenues and that was mostly focused on the medical side and that's what they call what what's an mlr is a medical loss ratio Long story short, the first of its kind actually included dental insurance, and it just passed uh, in the midterms um, a few weeks ago in Massachusetts, where voters decided to establish a medical loss ratio for dental insurance for the first time at 83 so percent. Um, what does that which, mean, Dwight? It's which is so a good. big deal. So in other words, what that means is, is that they require that 83 percent of the premiums that were paid to the insurance company must be spent directly dental on care. dental care um oh. or is it, will have what is it now is it unregulated no it's unregulated right you can spend like no percent <laughs> exactly it's unregulated we've heard there are some dental insurance companies where it's just an add-on to the plans and we've seen numbers closer to 40 and 50 but we also have seen numbers of blue cross blue shield uh, and Delta Dental that are down in the 20 percentile. I can you imagine 80% of profit? Lobbyist, I, I can't believe lobbyists have even let this come. Like, can you imagine going from like, yeah, we make we, we make 80 cents on the dollar to mm -hmm. we make 17 Well, it's cents? so it's so unjust that lobbyists are forced to. I mean, you know, to, to you know, the politicians are forced. No, so you've got to think that. about the fact, compare this to the medical world. This is the, this is the difficult thing is I don't think people understand that the medical dynamic, the MLRs for the Affordable Care Act were 88%. So they require Massachusetts already established 88% MLR for uh, medical insurance plans, but there was no previous MLR for dental insurance plans. Now, clearly dental insurance plans are usually more like discount plans and they are technically insurance. And this is, this is why I think it's such a dramatic change. And we, we've uh, worked with several doctors that are out of Massachusetts and they're trying to revamp and figure out, you know, the impact, what this is going to make for them to say the least. Now, clearly if they don't spend the money on their dental so components, they, they have to re give the, the premium back to so the, Dwight, either the business or the individual. Okay. Yeah. So this was basically, you're saying that, that, Massachusetts is going to become the precedent because the voters sure. in Massachusetts overwhelmingly approved the measure to reform dental insurance medical loss ratio. And so you're, and then it becomes effective. It looks like here on January 1st, 2024. Mm -hmm. So Correct. at that point, that's when they'll start having, they give them a year essentially from now to, to so restructure and find ways together. to yeah. manipulate structure. So you're saying that that's going to be the dominoes are going to start to fall. And because of the overwhelmingness, it's going to be brought to other house floors, other mm -hmm. state house floors. Mm -hmm. And correct. is that, is that your prediction? Is that what you're <clears> Yeah. You're now there was, Massachusetts? uh, correct. So Massachusetts is not the first to pass a type of legislation, but they did go to the minimum. So California passed one, but they didn't have a minimum standard. So they passed uh, a law in 2014 requiring minimum reporting. And what they required was that they have to report their MLRs, which means you're showing me how much, and that in essence was already just because of the politics in California, right? If an insurance company is showing that they're spending 
on, you know, it's a little politically driven and therefore it's going to make a push to get them to spend a little bit more. Um, we've seen some California insurance companies, which by the way, there's a lot less to go over there for this reason, but um, they, they made a push up to 76% of MLR. Um, and, and that happened after this law was passed, but that they're trying to push for the next threshold. The ADA did invest $5 million mm -hmm. into uh, making this push in Massachusetts to make sure that the, the minimum was established, um, in order to make sure that in hopes that it would create a domino effect in our industry. So honestly, it's, it's a big deal for a lot of insurance driven practices. I think that's a real big discussion. Um, I'm sure that it will have its caveats, um, with regards to out of network, um, and in network and things to that degree. But at the end of the day, it's about putting money back in the pockets of the individuals. Now, some of these groups are claiming the ones who were the lobbyists against this were claiming that it's going to create conflicts for the amount of available dental care, um, that the access to care is going to be affected. Um, what would be their argument? Like what was their, their argument is that the, that most of them are going to back out or that it's not going to be a feasible model right? Or that mostly because dental plans are going to increase in cost significantly to be able to essentially become just like so, healthcare. So they're going to say that they can't run their business unless they get 80% profit. Sounds Correct. like Twitter pre and post Elon. <laughs> That's exactly it. Or the we, fact we, that they're going to increase the fees so high that it's going to be ridiculous. So, to no, just when you're used to making 80% profit, it seems unconscionable to have to live on 26% profit. Right. But Correct. most of us would be happy to get 26% net profit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, they have it right here in their, I mean, the summary of the of the bill. Right. Well, listen, guys, it is true. Like the CEO of Aetna only gets paid like 500 million per year. So <laughs> he might have to be, he might have to go down to like something a little bit more realistic, like 300 million per year, yeah. maybe. Three what do you think is fair? Fairness. Think of, so think of, and Dwight, you mentioned ADA putting $5 million to go towards this. That's like pissing in the ocean. Think of the yeah. lobby against this. Oh no! Right. That's yeah. what I was saying, Dre. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh no! Yeah. So yeah. And and the the because of the fact that a, a dental insurance plan is basically a discount plan, essentially that never gets used anyway. You're talking about a massive restructure to model healthcare, uh, medical healthcare. Yeah. That will. I mean, I, there's a lot of things <laughs> that have to happen to really get this off the ground and see what it what for it to filter down to us at this point in time. Yeah, yeah, just just to be accurate though, Karen Lynch, the CEO, the president of Aetna, only she doesn't do that well, guys. I mean, I don't know if you know if you could live on this. She only makes 7.3 million per year. Yeah. Oh. That's struggle that's, bus. Uh, that's hard. That's the struggle bus. CEO. Yeah, it yeah. is the struggle bus. No, that's the that's the president, Karen Lynch. It's hard. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, I'm reading it right now on comparable. But yeah. Oh, so the biggest push against it was um, the National Association of Dental Plans. And that is where they're they're claiming that they're going to include increased premiums that are going to be medical level or decreased dental plan options. So essentially, you're going to cut out all the lower staging and all the access to those benefits just to where it's basically out of reach. And then the the expectation or their belief is that it's going to push it into a more of a nationalized healthcare methodology where you're going to go down that road and it's it's going to decrease access to care anyway and it's going to be controlled by government so they jumped way out right they're they're arguing at a, at an absolute extreme level so <clears throat> it's insanity Look yeah, the, the Delta, listen to this Delta Dental of California. I'm I'm really worried about these companies. Their net income was only 192 million mm. um on 4 billion of total function. I'm sorry, total revenue 4.6 billion. So Aetna's, yeah, Aetna's CEO was paid 28 billion. Yeah, I'm really worried about year. these guys. I think we should I'm going to argue, maybe you know, I'm going to steal man this and just argue that we should all just agree to not steal man. To listen not to it. listen to him using all all in words. No, oh, they, that they invented that freaking term, jackasses. So, so <laughs> Can I'm going to find that. Say, I'm just going to say that we should agree to 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 accept lower reimbursements because to, to support them. Yeah, 
Uh, because there's nothing I mean, worse than someone who's used to probably that, <laughs> those CEOs probably have people to chew their food for them, and now they have to chew their own food, and it's going to be hard. It's a and, big change. You know, all it's we have just change. guys come together and be happy. You get six hundred dollars per crown. It's not That's a right. big deal. Yeah, your lab bill's two hundred. Your overhead's forty eight percent. You can make nineteen dollars a crown. Yeah, roll week. It's not that hard. <laughs> Y'all will be fucked, but we'll keep going at six hundred dollars a crown. <laughs> no, I think I think we should do that. No problem. Guys. He's like solid. Thank you. Yeah, sign me up. I mean, how do you get by on one hundred ninety-two million dollars of net income per year? <clears throat> Struggle is real, man. Yeah. So, so what happens, guys? Let's let's take take this down yep. the path. Does this mean that insurance reimbursements? I'm sorry. Do you think insurance premiums have to go down because Delta Dental is not going to like charging people $200 a month to have to distribute out uh, $160 of that. <clears throat> so they're just moving money through their system at that point versus the one they just, because they, if they're only giving out 20% you know, now, they have a couple true. options you're saying lower premiums, yeah. lower, lower premiums, premiums or be in the habit of refunding money. Right. Yeah. But it, I mean, what happens in the short term? I'm just curious what happens. It will be a loophole, some admin or some kind of thing. They'll find. No, it. there's they'll not for medical and medical. You get reimbursement checks in your medical insurance. Yeah, I don't know. Craig. <clears throat> I don't know. My favorite though about this is is they made an argument that they will not be able to argue or push back on dental come uh, directly against dentists and their high fees to represent the general population if they're limited in this way that was one of their arguments is that they won't be able to push back on dentists and their fee structures and things to that degree which i just find it interesting because you're going to have to comp through it i think if anything they're going to have to increase the amount of uh, uh approved procedures or go down that road to say the least um but then patients i think there's going to be a caveat as to whether patients show up or actually get care and kind of start going down that road or else you're going to be in a situation you're stroking a lot of checks out. Yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting dynamic. So do y'all think that this means that, that it goes more to just a general way. medical plan and that's just kind of the way it starts? Yeah, I think premiums go down. Reimbursements. Um, I don't think they'll, they, I think premiums are going to be lowered drastically. So let, here's one of the issues that I think is a downside though is premiums go down and let's say deductible goes up and let's say it becomes a true medical model call your deductible oh, great that's great for us three grand Wonderful. maybe if people Love are it. willing to pay it but then it's three grand out of pocket before that anything's covered well let's just call insurance dental insurance what it is it's a total farce it's a it's a it's a discount plan at best it doesn't it's the only insurance product that we all have that we are excited to use and it it doesn't it doesn't i mean the the average you know the average total benefit was about fifteen hundred dollars and it's been that way since like the 1970s and the 1970s an fmr cost fifteen hundred dollars so it hasn't kept up with um um uh inflation and it's uh it's a farce it doesn't really work so i think this is pushing uh dental insurance out of the out of the norm, I, I maybe it'll go away. I, I I think that it might go away. I think it's going to end up increasing the premiums to be like health insurance premiums, I would agree super with high. I, I, and you it's know, going to skyrocket. Been been right, but then it just then you disrupt so it. So, so so you're, there's a delicate balance of how much am I willing to pay per month to get a maximum allowable of fifteen hundred. So what I what I mean is that a lot more is going to get paid for because there's going to be a much higher premium, but the cost, meaning the access to health insurance. So what it was like before, before, you know, the Obamacare push was, oh, my gosh, it costs so much for me to have good health insurance. And I have to spend so much out of pocket and blah, blah, blah. And the concept was, was to socialize medicine in a way that it would kind of across the board, more people would have access to care and blah, blah, blah. And that was the argument, right? But what happens to maximum allowable benefit? That's the most important thing. So if mm. you believe that maximum allowable benefit is going to stay at 1500 or 2000, which I'm presuming you think that's what's going to happen. No, I think that that will go up, that you can get uh, more care done. But okay. I think that the premium for the cost, I think it's literally going to look like a medical insurance model. It's going to so like a hundred thousand dollars of potential care because that's medical insurance. If you get catastrophically, uh, if you're if there's a catastrophic level of disease, they mm -hmm. could be paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for you. Right. So you're but saying in, dentistry in, could go up by what? 
But I dentistry think, doesn't have that type of price tag to it. There's a limit. It to does. What you're gonna yeah, spend. it does. It goes up to all on four and full yeah, arch. But that's, I mean, it, that's a drop in the bucket compared to what medical goes up to. My point being is that yeah, 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 sure. there's a but limit. Not, but look at the lift out. from but look I at the lift from a fifteen hundred dollar maximum allowable to a seventy thousand dollar treatment plan. That's a big jump. I'm just I think curious what you think ahead. would happen to maximum allowables too. I think that if you want to have good insurance, you're going to have to pay for it the same way you do with medical. And it's going to be a massive increase in premium. But, and, but then look at the model <clears> then, Dwight, because then you, so you would elect for that plan because the thing about health insurance is you never know the year in which you're going to have a catastrophic problem. Sure. Dentistry, you'll go in like, shit, I need an all, I need double all in fours at 70 G's. Mm -hmm. Let me pay into this high level premium for a year or two, do mm -hmm. my thing and then go back down and elect with the most basic one. Yeah. You can gamify dental insurance because it's not really insurance. Right. Teeth are not a medical necessity in this that's country. That's why I think it's going to change. That's, that's the now, gonna... but that's going to change. I think it'll transition to being the standard and it will be, hey, this is, if you want dental care, you're going to have to either go down that direction or you're going to have to have a concierge model the same way medical insurance is. I think one thing we can all agree upon, this legislation will spread and it's going to, completely change the face of the way we're doing insurance right now oh. dental insurance right now yeah. it's going to completely change it well i think one of the big big components to this is if you take nothing away from this conversation it is be amongst your peers be in a mastermind be in something because right now my struggle is is just like it was during covid there were so many things changing so quickly and i do think that over the next three to five years this will be a big chunk of that transition and my interest is knowing how does this impact consolidation as well? That's what I would love to hear a little bit more of because the impact of it becoming a more um, uh, harder to access care because of increased premiums, because of just kind of a more complex model, how much more of our team is going to be allocated to accommodate or deal with insurance issues. Um, and it's going to go down that direction. Next thing you know, sure, we might get compensated more. But it's going to be a harder model. You know how insurance is for for medical. It's going to be far harder perspective to try and tackle. It's going to be a harder a model point. at first because it's change. Yeah, but, but, but then just like everything else, you will adapt. You will it will become mainstream and then it'll become the norm. Right. Well, I think one thing we can agree upon: this is good for dentistry. I agree. I think so, this I is think a, so a net positive. I agree. I think it will be too. I just think you have to be prepared to take it on and to tackle it and pivot your own model. Because I think a lot of the models, all of our models will change a certain amount. And all of our models, even on this group are, are different and, it, and each of us are different. So we just have to be prepared to see what that looks like. Um, and I think the more flexible you are, the, the easier it is to take advantage of the benefits that come out of this. But if this means that more patients will receive more care, of course we win. I actually think that everyone wins. Um, it's just a matter of making use of it. And I think that before it was just a discount plan. Most insurance companies were treating it as a little discount plan, an, an added benefit that you could add like a vision plan or like a life insurance plan. Oh, you can get dental too and clump them all into your health insurance plan. And now this is going to stand on its own. Oh, well, we have Aetna for health, and but we have Blue Cross Blue Shield for dental because we have to you treat them in a totally it. different ways. And it, it's yeah. not going to be as much of a bundle method. I mean, at the end of the day, too, it's it's helpful to bring this up that in dental insurance is just really expensive marketing. That's all it really is. Yeah. You can choose to pay your your customer acquisition cost. I mean, we have this time discussion on Mighty Networks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And trade, you and it's I just expensive. Yeah. It's, it's, not, just expensive. it's only expensive marketing in certain models which is a whole different conversation, but I would argue it's cheap marketing. It is. It is cheap marketing. If you, mm -hmm. um, you know, your are for you, it's, it's, you're not looking to hunt for dental whales. You're not looking for the all on four. You're not looking to land the $50,000 yeah, case. For your Correct. practice ecosystem, yeah. it's cheap marketing. It's wonderful right. marketing. It, it has to do it's with not. the model. Yeah. Right. But also you can have a hybridized model. So I have providers that are in network providers that most likely is in the practice. Is legal in every state, by the way, Craig? Do you know? I don't know. Do I? Don't can know. you guys do that? Can you have different providers inside of the same roof? Do like, for instance, I'm only fee for service, and then other providers can be in network. You can. Can do you that? do that in yes. Texas? Yes, you can do, you do that. Think we, I've ever. Are you into it? Are you an in network provider for anything, Dwight? Personally, your your provider. I'm no. I've over time transitioned myself out 
and so most of my procedures at this point in time fee for service i have a okay. few of them my endodontist is fee for service okay um but you have yeah. gps that are on certain networks and others that are not right correct and right. i love this idea that you can be and peter good good question i don't know i don't know about the issue with every single state but if it, someone I, knows about georgia can you put it in the chat please or in the comments there you go. We're trying to use the comments more for uh, crowdsourcing boy. stuff. And I know some people listen to this on actual uh, uh, the i uh, iTunes. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, if you're listening to it or if you're watching it on YouTube, it is very visual. We are we are very visual these days. Look at the four of us. Brady, but... <laughs> Take that for what you will. <laughs> yeah, it could be a dangerous <laughs> conversation, baby. Well, especially with new Dwight. So, I know. Yeah, yeah. Old Dwight's Shit. fine. New Dwight's like scary. I'm scared of yeah. New Dwight. New Don't Dwight. cross him. Yeah, yeah, old Dwight him. was like Ned Flanders. This new Dwight is like, uh, <laughs> new Dwight. This is like Dwight. Dave Chappelle. Might this drop this conversation. Ned Flanders to Dave Chappelle. I'm gonna repeat. I'm gonna repeat what Tippett always says. Is like, you never knew because you never asked. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Old Dwight, flipping Ned Flanders, flipping guy, flipping mother Ned. flipper. It's freaking right. man. Hey, mother flipper. J. Cal, should we move on? Yeah, we can. Let's do it. What's All on right. our agenda? What's on? What's next? We got some you good said, said you had a spear article up there. Okay. Spear. Yes. Yes. You did. I did because I'm following. Oh. I'm following your agenda. So the oh. next thing you want to talk about Go is oh, the session. I get the big R. Can I ask a I question real quick? Scolded today. Yeah. For go for it. About macroeconomic stuff with by Craig again. So can I ask you a question? Again. No sleepy, Craig. I was. Uh, I was thinking about. I got invited to lecture for Spear. Mm -hmm. Should I do it? Yes or no? What do you think? What? What's about the what? Let's vote really live. Crowds? Are you really asking? Me I'm, well, amongst these guys, He's crowdsourcing too. So, are you? you know, what is it? What's the topic? People listen to this, right? Like, why would you ask that? Um, I don't know. Edit it out. I just want to ask Dwight, no, Dwizzle, and Dwizzle and Trey. Dwizzle, why? What? You clear a line right there? Together, or what? Trizzle. Yeah, what, what is, what's the topic? And um, they want to talk. They want me to like do like a business module on like how to how to attract and retain good team members. Basically, mm -hmm. it's uh like a video, um, two hour video thing or a one hour of content. They play it at all their local study clubs. Free so basically, you're gonna put some online video content developed yeah. for them. Yeah, exactly. Cost benefit. Um. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to. That's What's why the I asked downside, you. Downside, Craig. Downside is like, oh, you know, I, I don't oh, know. A waste of an hour. What was me? No, just looking you like an idiot. Huh? Looking like an idiot. You you will never look like an idiot. Just yeah, do that's it. Not true. This is this is the give back. Give if, back. Yeah, Who cares? I agree. If that's your answer, then do it. All right, Let's do it. My God, let's move. All right, let's so, move on. Sorry. Do don't don't ever try and be the moderator again. No, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Okay, go back, moderator. <laughs> Who's the moderator? So there is always Dwight. it's me. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's me. All right. So obviously the continued discussion of uh recession proofing. Um, I'm super interested in these these components. So he's got a spear article up relates to four ways to recession proof your dental practice, which I find did any of you who's Amy Morgan? Well, yeah, I was gonna say this was written by <coughs> an Amy Morgan who's Let's find out who Amy's like, he's a consultant, says the article. Cons yeah, so she's I also more about, about Amy Morgan. She's also written about partnership transitions, navigating the ideal exam, coronavirus proactive steps, simple I mean, fire Morgan, is the, the badass none of us have ever heard of. Well, I don't want to disparage. I mean, no, I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm just saying. It's a lot it's of it has to do with more uh, focus on clinical um, ways okay. to kind of protect yourself from the. Recession. Well, let's let's like okay. So like, look. So if the she dental pride CEO, but it's the not. It's nothing are, you don't know. So let's read through it. it. It's basically here's the four ways. Here's the groundbreaking ways. Know your numbers. Number Go two. Figure. Know your patients. Number three adapt your systems number four stay the course like this to me this is just this is just yeah. a spammy article yeah. that's yeah. how oh, yeah so she yeah got yeah. it so what's who's the pride institute just so i know they are a consultancy for they've been around forever craig um uh golly i should, should google it but i'm doing it right now it started by jim pride i think his name is jim oh i thought it had to no, when I put Pride Institute, it's the LGBTQ residential no, outpatient no, Pride Institute.com. The reason okay. I bring this up is because there is more 
generalize garbage like this out there right now. And given, I, I get it, know your numbers, of course, blah, blah, blah. But there's no actual yeah, that doesn't clarity. recession proof. Doesn't you, by do the way. anything. You should do that. That's a general basic business this is, 101. This is garbage. Yeah. This is yeah. That's garbage. basically the course. Exactly. But, now, but what I what does the course mean? Like, you let's know, be so, honest with <laughs> we're the vast service for going in a business. Stay the course. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I think that. What? Who's that voice down below that I'm hearing? I don't see anybody. Can you? Because the banner's on his face. Here I am. Here I am. He's there. <laughs> <laughs> Please, there somewhere. Peter's not happy. Peter, no, you don't mind because I'm, I'm just like, dude. Is, is Google, no, stuff? no. Do Pride right. Institute. Do what I, I just did. It's, it's, it's. Um, I did. I looked it up. It's just. It's. I don't know what they do. It's a. That's premier, fine. It's, well, a it's spear. Just so you know, group. it's spear because. They bought no, she's the spear bought them. Pride. Oh, spear right, bought them, which is why uh, she's working for them. Which is Craig, why you the probably, just, on you there. probably just got uninvited by the uh, way. And, and Look, Craig, definitely. Craig just got <laughs> hired to work <laughs> for the <Cindy>. Pride Institute. <laughs> what was your feel? You don't want to look like an idiot? Well, congratulations. Yeah, you did it. You, you <laughs> Check, did it. Uninviting you. <laughs> Check. It's made me so happy yeah. just letting this That's go. Awesome. So wait, what do that Pride Dash Institute? I just want to see that. Just cut and paste that bad boy. I'm trying. I'm trying. That's a right click, Peter. <laughs> Listen here, buddy. All right. While he's doing that, um, uh, yeah, I, I like the idea of stay the course, adapt and stay the course. It's like conflicting. Yeah. See what I'm saying? That's yeah. their, they redirect you to the LGBTQ recovery program. That's what I was showing you. Oh my God, you're you're right. I know you thought I was making a joke. I'm not well, that they just got you the, someone got, I'm not gonna lie. Someone got the you URL said, wrong. Honestly, how do um, you know? Maybe she's the CEO of that. Oh God, this yeah, is the Pride on. Institute. This is not the same dental one. That's right. On. But when you look at Dentistry Today's article, that's their contact and their phone. They number. Took, they sent you to the wrong. Okay, okay. That's pretty rough. That's yeah, good, well, whatever. yeah, the no. pride was uh, golly. Now, now we, now we do need to stick on this. Uh, Peter well, must have been in charge of the links on that one. No, but, no. <laughs> I, see, I see, what you, I see what you're doing there. So, just for the listener, I when, see when what you're doing. Peter will see, routinely send out a link, and then when we click on it, we're idiots. Why did you? Well, you got the wrong link. Well, um, you're the one you sent, so just so people know. Anyway. <laughs> So let's go on. So, hey, hey, that let, was a good story. Okay, you're right, correct, Dwight. Look at this. Yeah. There we go. You Got it. See that? And that would yeah. be the Pride Dental Institute. So Craig, I mean, just right. oh, see, but, but but I was right. The vision of the steward, Dr. Jim Pride, a long advocate okay, for it. increased education to help dentists balance clinical and business demands of their practice. So I it was around forever. It was a consulting seat. He passed away. Um, let's see, I know he passed away uh, in 2004. So. Anyway, long time, but he was he was faculty. So well, let's Great. get off of that. They have their link wrong. We've we've already found out that this is kind of garbage. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's talk about the real ways to recession proof your practice. Let me, I want to see that list again. Sorry, can you go back for a second? Yeah. So, so one. So, okay. One, so number know one, your know your numbers. If you're a business owner, you need to know your numbers at all times. Period. That, you, you exactly. Need to, not just not in a recession. Not a recession. Right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's because so you're when a business you, owner. When you're yeah. in a recession, it's too late. You can't, you don't, you have to start, start right now. Um, know your patients. You should always know your patients. You should always know your know, avatar. Yeah. Know your I mean, avatar. What type of patient? Like, see how clear Trey is about, like, hey, insurance works for me because I do, we do quadrant dentistry. It's a very different avatar from Peter and, or I or even Dwight. So it's really important. Adapt your systems. You should always be adapting systems. And I disagree. You should, stay the course um wait, wait, wait. It, look it literally it just contradicts himself adapt your systems maybe instead of doing 12 full mile three constructions each year the practice should do 24 three to five thousand dollar cases the net a flexible dentist may need to change their marketing new patient screening number four but stay the course that's what i was talking <laughs> about that's what, that's what i was gonna say but stay the course if you like your your practice just stay. i think what they meant to say is like look ba nothing bad lasts forever Right. So when I saw this link, I said to myself, they're literally talking about everyday business and not about how to recession proof. Like you have to pivot. You have to change. I mean, it's easier to look up another article uh, about COVID to find yourself about recession proofing. Scroll down on this article. This is the one that I found really so this interesting. This is a new article we're looking at now. It's, and it's the from, dental economics. From 2014. Dental economics. 
and it's a reflection of <laughs> it's a, the it's current. a reflection of so the financial this? crisis. Oh, VJ Sika. Okay, so I know him. He's legit and smart. Okay. Yeah, this is so, written in 2014, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. It's a response <laughs> to the impact. This is data in response to the impact of the financial crisis in the dental industry. And I want you to scroll down, keep scrolling until we get to the chart. I just okay, found so this well, super I know interesting. Going with this, Dwight. I know where you're going. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me when yeah. to stop. Uh, There's a prognostication that Usher, became true. Go down yes. one more, one more. That bottom one, that one right there. So that chart, if you can hit the control plus to make it larger on your keyboard. Yeah. All right. All this is showing you is patients visits versus gross production during that last essential recession. And what wow. you see is what you see that yes, patient visits drop dramatically. But for the fewer number of patients, those patients were willing to spend more. Interesting. So, the con so you're talking, so this is obviously, this is the data from the great financial crisis of correct. 2008. So using this data to extrapolate, I'm just making correct. sure we're stating it. So correct. Say, because like, I think everybody will get on here and say, if you reflected to COVID, COVID was a what of a law. And then people had flush money from the government. Was, so I'm trying to compare it. History to doesn't repeat itself, but it sure does rhyme, right? That's correct. All right. That's exactly right, it. So, here we so go. what I'm seeing Keep here is a lot of people will freak out and say, well, we have to find a way to go crazy and because our numbers are going down. When in reality, what most of us need to recognize is stop running at the same pace. Odds are you might have less patients, but more of those patients want to get more done and more comprehensive care actually mm. does increase. And well, so if you look at that, go back article, to that one second, go mm -hmm. back to, to that chart one second. I just want to yeah, show one thing. So look at, um, God, I, I need glasses to see this. What Look at 2008, 9, and 10. You see how um, productivity is flat and patient visits start dropping. And then as they go really far down in 2011, patient visits, the production goes up. So yeah. potentially production what's happening is, visit, yes. right. So what's happening, and this is just you know my hallucination, is that people are blowing off their routine care and then small problems, little fillings, little things that were not being taken care of come back and they need massive levels of care. The big reason why a lot of our practices spiked after COVID is because they weren't getting the preventive care. So what I see here, and maybe I'm just wishful thinking, like looking into this, but I see a flattening out of, um, or uh, a flattening out of productivity as the, why the, the two axes is cr cross. Mm -hmm. And then you see a good drop in patient visits, but people are coming in like, meaning I don't have the money. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting till it hurts. And when it hurts, it's not a profi. When it's hurts, it's not an MO. When it hurts, it's an implanted extraction. What's interesting too on this, Craig, I agree with you saying that yep. from the, what's interesting on this graph. And if look, everyone who went through 2009 knows it was pretty catastrophic. It was pretty bad. I mean, there was some, there was some real pain back then. I know, you know, just speaking yep. personally so from trough to <clears throat> peak okay, right from trough to peak the delta on this this so craig is saying at the intersection was basically right before the great financial crisis at right. the apex or the biggest delta between highest neglect meaning so, highest lowest right. level of patient visits from highest trough to peak the delta is only about not only but it's about let's see from uh 237 so, so what like, i'm saying is there's 30 a, there's let's a, call it 30 dollars there's right? an so inverse it's a 10 relationship though it's a 10% swing. And so it's, it's Dwight, I guess we, I, are you going to this where you're saying essentially it always feels worse than it really is? I've, potentially? I'm saying that it's most of the practices that we have discussed many times that really struggle during downturns things to that degree, they hyper react. And one of the hyper reactions that we normally see is, and we can talk about a couple other methods, right? Financial methods that make it easier for patients to pay and blah, blah, blah. Sure. But the biggie here is, is most people will a shut off marketing, yep. B uh, close, shut down or close down hours or reduce team member size, right? They just yep. look at their profit and loss statement. And they're like, well, <laughs> I need to cut costs, cut costs, cut costs. And in reality, make yourself available. Focus on the basics of just, hey, I need to make it easy for people to pay, make it easy for people to get in, but I still need to be aware, be available and pivot towards, maybe it's not a numerical thing, but be more prepared for your marketing should talk about emergency care. It shouldn't talk about the day to day. 
you know, and you're not in bleaching mode, but you're more in kind of a, a maintenance mode, right? It's a like, return to a solid foundation, which yes. you should have again, regardless anyway, across the board. Agree, Trey. But yeah, also, one of, say, one of the like, beautiful things about our business is when when people don't seek care, whatever for whatever reason, whether that's the pandemic or a recession, it leaves a backlog of care that needs to be done later. So mm-hmm. we have a beautiful profession that like just like people, COVID did. Right? Yeah. That's why COVID, we had the rage in right. COVID. We had a rate. So and also imagine all those people that were putting off like the, Pen, the crowns up demand. Told them. The pent right. up demand, remember? <clears throat> right. That's what happens. That's the supply chain. We are a type, we're a routine maintenance business. Let me ask you people guys something. Us. Let me ask you guys something. Do you think that KPIs, I'm thinking about this article or, or some other article, should KPIs do you think they should change in good times versus bad times? No. Dwight. No. So n- when I say KPIs, <clears throat> I mean the ones you're actively looking at and using to to be a barometer. Do yours change at all? Are there any that you would put more emphasis on? Mm. I could come back to you if you want. I know I'm not the moderator, but. No, no, no. I love it. Um, I mean, I would focus on increasing same day dentistry. Okay. So at the, I was actually going to say this. So the average production patient, the APPV number is what I call it. The patient per, per visit would be a little bit which, more focused, which would be the same thing as what you're saying. Same day dentistry. Well, you, but you also have to be prepared because you know, those, those numbers are based on the number of patients that are coming in. And if for any reason your hygiene decreases slightly, as yep. opposed to your day to day, then those numbers, hygiene might be production slightly or hygiene reappoint hygiene production. Got it. Hygiene total yeah. production. Those numbers will go down. And that that's on that article as well. Doctors versus hygiene production. What dipped during that whole uh, financial crisis was hygiene, uh, was not hygiene production. It was actually nope. doctor's production. And that right. was the area where we have to realize like, what which is, is it what that's happens in 2000, which, which would happen in, you know, like it always happens in any kind of crisis, mm-hmm. right? I hygiene agree. pretty say, say is consistent. Going back to what we talked about in the beginning, there's usually coverage for that, meaning there, here's some insurance benefit, right? That That's almost right. covers all of it or does yes. cover all of it. So, And this is where I think COVID was different than, than this financial crisis because COVID is like, you can't do hygiene. You can only do emergencies. And, you know, government got involved and tripped things up and created complexities, which is why I wanted to look back at this. Because the truth is, is this is a more applicable apples to apples in my, in my Craig, belief. Is anything though. change on your, from a KPI standpoint, anything you're monitoring? I'm asking you the same question. Then Trey, I want to hear your <clears throat> specifically good times versus bad times. Do I focus on different things. Well, the that... KPIs, yeah. Do, do they change? I think we all should go ahead. No, they, sh- they shouldn't change. It should be the same set, but do you have something that you pay attention to more? Does something become more important in that? Um, you know, I can't really speak with confidence on what I would do because I, every recession is different. And, um, you know, I can speak to the last recession. I was optimistic and I did a merger during the last a recession. It did well. Uh, I, I, I don't, you know, obviously recessions and uh, a, a financial crisis, I would expect that we'd all do less well. I mean, obvi- I don't want to point out the obvious, but I think we'd all do less well. And I would be focused on what are the unique opportunities outside of the KPIs because I don't really know. Okay. So the so to answer your question is no. I would not that. focus okay. on different KPIs. I'd still want my hygiene Trey, anything, appointment rate high. Any answer? Yours should be very profound, Trey. You've had you've had lots of time to think about this since yeah, last time. Yeah, I know. Plus your stat, your stat but, is profound. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. no. Okay. The answer is no. But and I will say, and I, you, I, Greg, you might have been trying to go down this direction. But what I will say is no. I will not change KPIs. I won't focus on anything differently. However, I will start to look for opportunities because of the fact that opportunities are going to be abundant in a situation where things drop and therefore a focus changes in that regard. But in terms of how you run the day-to-day operations, no. I think, and no one asked me, but I'm going to tell you what I'm asking. We're asking right now. I think that you look for lead indications, things that are going to prognosticate where your months are. And we already know what does it. It's the hygiene reappointment. So you make sure that stays consistent. The second thing I would do is become hyper-focused on whatever protocol I have for a reactivation protocol where people are becoming inactive or haven't been reappointed. So I'd be hyperactive on that, making sure mm-hmm. that people had next of appointment or finding out reactivation so that 
in this event that my new patients go down, regardless of the marketing, that I don't have a net loss of database of patient uh, database. That makes sense. Yeah. The next thing I would do is to make sure that that I would be tracking conversion. So I, I would be a little bit more crystallized with a dollar spent here yields five dollars here in marketing. So I would probably shrink down on some branding and go more towards conversion marketing as opposed mm-hmm. to just hey I'm going to shoot a bunch of videos here and there. I would go more with a laser laser uh, focus punch, kind of like what Dwight was saying. Maybe shift more towards emergency. Maybe maybe going Absolutely. more towards base hit as opposed to spending you know, three or $4,000 a month on just all on X marketing. I don't know right. if I would continue to do that or will continue. Yeah. It just turn all that stuff off. Yeah. Well, m- maybe Dwight, because guess what? Portions in metropolitan areas, and luckily we, you know, we all live in a metropolitan area. Trey, I don't really know if, if you would call yours metropolitan or not, but let's call it a yeah. secondary, right? Market. There are people, there were people in, in this recession, let's just say we're in one. And there are people in the last one who didn't know we were in a recession. Meaning, oh, no doubt. They yep. had money regardless of what you mm-hmm. did, mm-hmm. What, what the economy did. So there are pe- people who are financially independent. Now, that doesn't apply to the masses, but guess what? We were still doing large cases back then, Yeah. right? And and you'd be surprised, like, damn, I thought everyone was struggling. It's like, no, what, what recession? I drove into my Porsche or whatever. Yeah. So I I, I think I think we're, I'm now at the point of rambling other than just I think the KPIs should be <coughs> – you should pick five to 10 that you love. Make sure you're looking at them. Make, be, be looking for lead indications into the next things that, 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 you know, prognosticate your success. Make sure you're looking at those all day. All hey, the time. Pete, I just want to add, add a, a counterpoint to your, to your view um, okay. here. So I, when you said like, maybe I wouldn't be as likely to continue that surgical, um, advertising specific specific to uh larger ticket items like on four i kind of i feel the opposite i i think i didn't say i didn't say i was going to do that uh, let me just let me provide a counterpoint to your counterpoint i was saying was is i I which is my point you're validating my point no all i'm saying is that i would evaluate it right so i if if all of a sudden craig i had if if the conversions were going way down then i would probably adjust in proportionate the marketing spend on that he would react he would read it and make an yeah. adjustment but that's right. that's no different from you know i was really trying to highlight a difference between good time kpi bad time kpi everything you said is something that i think you do already that's but what i'm point. saying what i'm you saying need to is allocate what, your dollars to where they're more yeah, profitable so you're just, I think I just become day. more craig yeah. look in a bull market right we all know that like Revenue can can hide a bunch of problems. So I think I think you're right. You're right. I, I would just become a little bit more hyper focused on what's this doing? What's this doing? What are we doing over here? Well, let's say a small practice has five thousand dollars a month that they're spending on marketing spend, and they want to allocate it to make sure that things stay as stable as possible during that time. And that may mean that they pivot a few of their veneer spend and all on next spend I, towards I, more emergency spend, which we don't sure. always have to focus on. That's sure. just- and, and also let's just take a small practice right now too, Dwight, to add to what you're saying. If you're over the last six months, if your revenues have been stable or declining, or let's just say over the last year, while we're all mm-hmm. sitting here like, oh, it's been great the last year. Maybe we're speaking to a practice that's actually not doing well already. Right. You know, the, the recession is coming we're, we're, you know, I don't know. I think spending is still we're high. Well, I mean, coming. like, look, sure. okay. So if you want to go buy a brand new Cadillac or stay at the wind tomorrow in Vegas, it's going to be expensive and you can't get it. So the it's going dem- to be full. Con- consumer demand is still high. So what I'm saying is I'm speaking to the practices that are actually struggling right now, whilst right. consumer demand is high, mm-hmm. yeah. we're all prognosticating that consumer demand is going to go down. So right. for those practices, you got to get real proactive real Very. proactive Very. because if what you're doing is not working right now while or it hasn't been working for the last year because remember there's practices that have been declining ever since covid uh, opened back ever since the pandemic allowed us to ever since the pandemic ended and things started opening back up they've been going oh yeah down and down. Un- unpaid credit by americans has skyrocketed which means they don't want to feel the recession and they right. got told here's a bunch of money from the government they're 
method of expenses was increased superficially and they don't know how to stop that. And that is where we're at right now. So you're right. If you are doing poorly right now, there's going to be a lot of work to keep chipping away at that process because now it's probably as good as it's getting in a lot of ways, or at right. least over the next 10 to 18 months. I think longer, but yeah. So what do you advise those people? That's my question. How do you, what do you tell those people? What do you do? The first thing I would tell you is we've talked about this a million times. It is create a financial partner that will allow your patients to have a monthly payment strategy as opposed to telling them it's a $10,000 bill. This is to me is number one That's right what we now do. We're because all, all of us talk time. about how nobody knows how much a Honda Civic is, but we know it's about 290 bucks a month, right? Those are the things we talk about. That to me is my number one, but that the money comes to you first, even if it's a 6% or 10% haircut, but you're getting the money up front. Yep. Okay. And there's groups out there, whether it's a care credit, whether it's a Sunbit, whether it's all these others, fine, whatever. There's a lot of them out there build a relationship and build those systems with your treatment coordinators to get people to say yes to a monthly expense. And right. then we won't even get into how generationally that's more practical anyway, but that's, that's for recession proofing. I think that's a big key. Yeah. So that, so let's rewrite that article five ways to recession proof yeah. your practice. Perfect. It's Number actually one. the same article that would be written of how to grow your practice. It's call every person. <laughs> yeah. Call exactly. every person <laughs> oh after God. every procedure that gets Novocaine. <laughs> Literally call every single person. Hey, it's Dr. Spodak. Just making sure you're doing okay. If you have any problems, call the office. Number one. Number two, focus on your patient um, what's, uh, percentage uh, recall. What's it called? Um, reappointment. reappointment rate. Sorry. Reappointment. Keep your reappointment rate 95% or greater because that single metric alone is the greatest indicator to overall practice success. Number, Number three. three Ask offer for reviews and referrals. Right. Then ask for reviews and referrals. Number, Number four, four uh, create flexible payment arrangements and recognize that all people live in a monthly economy. The reason why the housing market got so hot was not because house prices were low. It's because monthly payments were low. Present don't your care. comprehensive treatment in terms of a monthly payment versus an right. aggregate amount is what you're saying. And Yeah, exactly. So always make. And then number five, which we could all agree upon, is what? Stay the course and adapt. Yeah. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> know your numbers. Yeah, know your numbers. Yeah. Know yeah. your numbers. Don't fly blind. Yeah. So, so then, that, my question. I, I officially, have been rescinded my invite. Yeah, no, yeah. no. What I love about this, you'll just have to start your own institute. Maybe call so, it bulletproof or something. Maybe I'm actually pretty prouder. Prouder. Right. Prouder. Prouder. Five plus. Yeah. Better yeah. than you. <laughs> Betterer. Better. More proud. Pride is I'm actually, I was very confident we'd proud, all end proud up boys. In the same I mean, look, the proud boy. Here we go. What, what do I? I'm mean? actually very confident that we were going to end up in this discussion because the question I want to pose to everybody now that we've had the discussion we've had because it said, oh, if you're a recession, come back through. Oh, wait, no, just do what you're supposed to do to grow your practice. And it's a mindset scenario and we're going down this road. Well, then, do you see most people overreacting? Yes. To a recession. 100%. Oh, and we know. That, that is probably the, the main market. takeaway here. I see myself overreacting in right. certain instances. <laughs> right. Exactly. I, of course. Out of, this is what I would uh, add to that list to go back just a little bit. Oh, wait, that, Craig's list? To Craig, yeah. Yeah, to Craig's list. To Craig's list. <laughs> Craig's beer list. <laughs> yeah. To the private it's, it's the personal ads. Part of it. I think they got deleted. Uh, people no, that need not, it the most the will never do. Are you, are you trolling it? Are you trolling it? Yeah, I uh, I'm, not, I'm not deleting it. No, I'm talking about the personal ads in Craigslist. Oh, oh, yeah. I just thought it was funny that I no, Craig, uh, yeah, Craig, yeah. Craig and List together just serendipitously. Land the plane, Trey. Land the Land plane. The plane. <laughs> what are your thoughts on someone that needs it the most going into a recession, hiring a coach or joining a mastermind, specifically hiring a coach because it's money? I, I, <laughs> They're the ones who need it the most. I think that's. That's probably one of the most beneficial things you can do, but it's one thing that will never get done. Coach, mastermind, 100%. or some kind of community where you're getting sound advice other yeah. than the article we just wrote. Like crab that is potting. not good advice. Or the crab potting. Because if you're in the wrong circle, I'm like, you know, the recession's coming. What I did, you know what I did? I, I prophylactically, I, I uh, prophylactically, pun in there. I, I, I preventatively laid off two of my hygienists because you know yeah. it's going to be slow. It's going to be right. slow, guys. Yeah. Absolutely. But this is, this is why I love 
this discussion because I feel like a, not only do we overreact, it's mostly because it depends on what we're feeding ourselves, whether it's, you know, from our, you know, watching too much news or being around the wrong people that are making us think and overthink. And therefore your team sees you coming in after hanging out with those people and you're trying to change everything in the business and the business is actually probably going pretty good and you kind of overreact. And that's kind of my biggest fear is that sometimes everybody tries to way overdo it. And every single one of these graphs actually ended up higher than it started. Right. And nobody realizes it's like, it, it's like the, being a day trader in your practice. Stop day trading your clinical day-to-day -day operations. You can't do it. And the, the point is, is hold the line, do what you need to do while also be proactive and see, because every day, even when there's not a recession, we're making pivots and changes and Hey, it's the 10th of the month, 15th of the month. And guess what? We're a little behind day-to-day. -day. Are we tracking? Do we need to get ahead of it? Do we not? If you're not already doing that, then yes, you need to find a different way, whether that's getting, like you said, get a coach, get a mastermind, get other people around you that are doing well, find those people. If you're just hanging out with all the other guys and girls who are struggling in their practice, guess what? You're going to continue to struggle. Yeah. The good, you know, your the circle, average, your the circle. average of the five people you surround yourself by, right? Yeah. One of the sure. best indicators of that, that graph that you, you popped up there. One of the things that if you, if you look at that graph, or uh, the graph, the graph that was of gross production, it essentially was an up and to the right curve. It didn't really, it didn't really flatline even. It almost just kept going up and to the right. Correct. Look at your, look at your average dentist salary from that, that time, even recently, it has done nothing but decline. Interesting. What, what so is, what that what points to is, nothing. you're saying this graph, this graph is up into the right trend. Look at that graph. Overall, it's up and to the right. All of so them on. average that line, it just goes up and to the right. It has that slight dip, but let's call that a flat line. Yeah, and it's a, so it's just you, one you, year. Yeah. So a, 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 let's call it a, a seven year moving average would kind of look like that, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of look, yeah, it would be, maybe but a little be, steeper, but it would be but up and to the right. You're right. Correct. Right. Okay. Yet our, our average income is down. It is continually yeah. moving down to where I think the last data out of the ADA was $167,000, yeah. which I think was from 2021. You know what that is, right? So let's let's add one more axis to this. What is the overall dental expenditures, money spent in dentistry going up and to the right, correct? So when you start right, wait, looking right, yes at or that, no, is dental spending, Can let's pull up uh, dentals. I think it's we're spending more now than ever before. Can we pull that up? Yeah, yeah I'm pulling it up, up now. All right. Somebody, so Peter. if you just take those two axes while we look for that, you start to look at it and realize you you just hang out with your peers that aren't really focused on any of that. People aren't running good ships, so you're going to get bad advice. You need to be very selective of who you're talking to and what you're doing and who you're surrounding yourself with because the numbers are not pretty when you start to look at it from that standpoint. Gross production but, but, going but, but up this, and salary wait, going down. So what's happening here, there's another thing that we're not talking about. I believe, and again, someone should correct us here, but I believe dental expenses, money being spent in dentistry over the last 10 years has significantly risen every single year. Correct. You have um, dentist, more money is being spent on dentistry. Dentists are making less money. And, and you know the reason why I think that's happening? DSO. Because what happens is that yeah. the DSOs and the, have put themselves in there. Dentists are actually making a lesser percentage of what they do. And the profit of the dental industry is funneling to a different place. It's a it's an effective concept. I it's really, I, it's I, going to a different so person. Right. Yeah. I agree with that, Craig. Yeah, I really do. Agree so with that. consumers are spending. U.S. consumers are giving more money to the dental industry, and the dental heads of DSOs and insurance companies, or whatever you want to call it, they're making the money. It's just the dentist is getting their ass kicked. So in what Trey, are you shaking your head yes or no, or what do you think? No, I, I think that's I, I'm I agree. It, Which the money's are, funneling to other people to ancillary services other than the provider. So then let's loop it all back together. We said initially that MLR legislation was going to cause is a good thing for dentistry. Yet you're now saying dentistry is more profitable now. It is. And therefore, how does that not increase consolidation? Wait, dentistry is more profitable. What do you mean? It would be more profitable more with MLR, MLR yeah. legislation. 
Got it. Okay. Which is better for maybe our runways or, you know, some so of our it runways. It accelerates the consolidation. Pathway, but it accelerates consolidation. And we just talked about how consolidation is decreasing the income of the individual and in their pocket. Of the clinician. Of the yes. clinician. Of the clinician. Yes. Correct. So essentially the question, the, the true wraparound before we just finalize this podcast, because I think it's a really good discussion. This is exactly what is going through a lot of minds of a lot of people is what are we talking about? If MLR legislation allows for increased compensation, all of a sudden our industry, we, we talked not too long ago about how BlackRock and some of the other big dogs are getting into it. This speeds up consolidation in every possible way. It's more savory than it ever was before. So how does that affect? Uh, how quickly will that cause consolidation to happen? And how quickly will that decrease compensation to the clinician? Does that mean you need to be focused on what your model is going to be? Because we've got a lot of clinicians that are part of Bulletproof that they love clinical dentistry, but they've also decided, I want to run my business. I want to maintain. The ops. They hate OPEX, right? Right. Or just ops. Sure. Which causes OPEX. Operational well, expense. Operational expense. Okay, there you go. There you go. Touche. Um, Very true. All right, Dwight, I think that's a good place to, to put a pin yeah. in that one. Um, that's, that's, that's good. It's, it's a complex dynamic. And I think that what I love is we need to keep talking about these topics because every little bit of these legislative pushes, we're always end up to, talking about what, how it consolidates or doesn't increases or slows it down things to that degree. Do I think that there's still going to be well, a 10 or 20% that's going to avoid? Yeah. But the question is what business models industry, are they going though, to have? Anything that's good for the industry. Is going, going to, to increase consolidation. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. So that's a that's an unfortunate conundrum. <laughs> what yeah. a very doomsday thing to end on. All right, guys. <laughs> see you later. Yeah. I'm gonna go buy a wash. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's funny to me that everybody's thinking that MLR is incredibly great. I think it is in many ways, but that's also what DSOs are thinking. And wow. so I think we just need to make sure we're focused on what type of a business we're creating and how we're protecting ourselves from not just recession proofing. But when we talk about recession proofing, we're also talking about how keeping your practice and enjoying your runway and building a comprehensive business model that survives not just recessions might also survive your consolidation into a DSO. Pete, I got a, I found a piece of data, by the way, while we're uh, kind of circulating around this whole thing. It's the average, it's the U.S. dental service market size 2020 to 2027 in U.S. billion. Mm -hmm. And it's a prognostication. So 2020 is 109, 2021, 136, 2022, 145, 2023, 154, 2024, 164, all the way to 2027, 196. Oh, yeah. So from 2020 to 2027, to those right. seven years, it believes this this precedent's research believes that the U.S. dental service market size is going to essentially double, and and compound that to what um, Trey is saying with average dentist salaries falling. Look at the rub as dentistry becomes incredibly lucrative. There's going to be a lot more workmen's than Dr. Trey's. <laughs> Doctor, sure. the, doc, you know, sure. that's what it yeah. means. Maybe not yeah. Trey, but there's going to be a lot, lot of Dr. Workman's versus Dr. Regular Guy. Do you guys want to end? Thanks for on... clarifying that, man. I didn't mean <laughs> it that way. Sorry. I, I don't want to insult you. I, just, I was like <laughs> many. And we can't even say us versus them because a lot of us run. Yeah. We all run businesses. So it's not even fair to say us. Well, Do I love this. It? I think this conversation is going to keep coming back. So we'll we'll put a pin in this one and be done. But. I think we need to spend more time together, fellas. There's a lot to discuss. Do you want to end well, this, if you could get uh, out of the, the damn Christmas, chair, Christmas bonus yeah, yeah. battle? Christmas oh, bonus? God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so Dwight, you're not going to be very happy, but uh, we, we did something. I'm always happy, my friend. I'm no, I didn't happy. mean that. You're not going to be very pleased with me specifically. Yeah, so, you, you know, when you're, when you're supposed to have an intelligent conversation, you really should be having the other person in the room. I spent like 10 minutes on a one-way conversation with me and the audience part of me about how I thought your, your, your science on Harvard business, you sent those four Harvard business reviews for the listeners that don't know, we had a Christmas bonus battle where everybody was very heated about why 
you know, why you should or should not gift for Christmas and how no, 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 that was not the argument. The argument was, <laughs> let me be clear. Yeah. The argument was, do you call that cultural? Does that relate yeah. to your culture or does right. that relate to you feeling good about yourself giving money? Away? Right. Right. You can and hand money with, away to a bum on the street makes you feel good. But right. does that benefit the culture right. of society? Right. No. Right. Right. Yes. Thank you for the clarification. Right. I don't right. give it a point. The part I was trying to say <laughs> is that your sole defense was a slew uh, of Harvard business review articles and which led me to believe that the ivory towers of education are crumbling. It's very kind of coincidental in my life that like my buddy, John, who, you know, Dwight really well, yeah, yeah. got a, um, got a, a, what took his company through price waterhouse and like had to defend sure. like, almost like a portfolio sure. defense of his company to sure. a bunch of Harvard business guys and Stanford yeah. business. Guys. John's worth, you know, $2 billion scrappy sure. knows his game. I was at a board meeting with people that will remain nameless last week in New York. And I was trying to help these people. And I was on their video, I was on their YouTube channel and their YouTube channel actually had videos that were promoting a service that they no longer do. That's detrimental. I'm like, who's the, who has the pastor to the YouTube channel? I wanted to delete these videos to which like, we don't have that. So what I was, tr I know I'm this is a long, this is a long, long, this is a long, long story to tell. No, it's good. To, I like stories to, 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 that that my, to tell, to tell you guys that my belief is that Harvard business people suck. <laughs> 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 and, and that if you send me, video. yeah, I don't give a shit. Tell me <laughs> oh, a guy, give me a Dwight, give me a Trey, give me a Peter who actually has ground game, who is a dentist, who runs a dental practice, who, who know, I, I, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a reason why we're so, we, we haven't known each other for the 20 years we've all been in dentistry or, you know, 10 or 20 years, but we're all amazingly similar. We all figured out yeah. how to run practices that are, that are different, but they're more similar than they are different. Sure. And you get a bunch of Harvard Agreed. or Stanford people like, Hey, this has been scientifically proven. Fuck it. That bullshit. So, Don't so give here, Don't I want to remind Don't you give also, incentives. it's been proven. I want to remind you that we were on a call with the mastermind and it is recorded. So you can go back and watch it. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the text said, chain I after said, you want me to pull it up. I show the you, no, no, Listen, listen, I want to tell you something. I said to you that it was not a cultural benefit, but that it made people feel good. Right. <laughs> I know. And so what did I say? What did I you say? You sent a bunch of Harvard business bullshit. HBR.com. Yes, HBR.com. Yes. HBR.com. Okay. Go to fucking Harvard what, then. What is this guy going to stop talking? Okay, listen. No, because you're... I, you I have asked the proof. me in the oh, shit, I love you guys. group. I love you guys. You put, okay, Trey and Peter, you're going to vote and remember this. I said it is non-cultural. It makes you feel good. According and to who? to do it. And According then who? you said to me... And then I said, there's a lot of literature on this. And what did you say, Craig? You said, oh, really? Like Harvard Business Review, real? And I said, yeah. So like, so, so let's and look so at I this. I sent you what you asked for. No, or no, I also no, would have no, sent no, you a bunch of literature no, from other no, stuff that I actually yeah. read a whole lot more on. So, so Everybody what holds the, the modern company together by Rob Gaffrey and Gareth Jones? This is like Ligama Johnson, these two. That's who these people are. <laughs> Everybody this is these one. people. Let's do the research. What is Rob Gaffrey? Like uh, literally, let's go through this and find out what this company, this guy Craig, runs. Do you remember asking me for an HBR literature to yes, back I what I was saying? That's literally what you asked for, which is why I gave it to you. This is not me wanting you to read that article. You asked for that in the mastermind and I have now supplied what you asked for. That's so it. He, he, so here's what he, he wrote. <laughs> He's Who, not listening, he, you not listening at all. No, let's just look at who he is. So Rob Gaffey and Gareth Jones, Trey, I'm calling you, you guys out. Me? Look at these. These, you these are pro you these are the ones that are why she trade talk. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in and I will say yes. Oh, why is correct? Unfortunately, Dwight... Gareth Jones, he tragically died. Oh my okay. god, this is <laughs> Craig, Craig, squirrel, listen. Now you're natural. Craig. <laughs> Craig, go. Dwight is correct. Craig, now you're getting emotional and proving your point now that you've been able to think in your echo chamber after a time. Both of y'all are correct in the overall scheme of things, sure. but you're arguing different points. And yeah. when we all get together and have our Christmas eggnog, we should put a camera together and actually go after each other over the deal. Well, all I'm saying is that I trust, I know what I asked for, but yeah, I realized I trust Trey and Dwight and Peter more than the professor of organizational behavior at the London Business School and the founding partner oh, of Creative Management Associates. On the that, topic of culture? 
on the topic and of culture. Yes. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. No, no, no. Hold on. On the topic of whether money breeds good culture or just makes you feel no. better. Uh, Christmas that's bonus the topic. does breed culture, Dwight. And has this guy has see. this guy that actually a micro ran a component business? of all the they aggregate things that you call the culture. How you treat your people is in directly proportional to the culture you breed. That's correct. The argument Dwight's making is that how you treat your people has nothing to do with it with money. With money. Oh, Thank really? You. Well, then ask him to work for free. See how that works. It, nobody's being That's asked. That's an to, over you, you believe that though. having a carnival, like you said, at your own practice breeds culture. Hey, let's have a par let's save a whole money. lot more than having a car Christmas our carnival. Book, by the way, practice. Rob Gaffey, the article on HBR. Oh my God, he's really got on that. No, I'm just telling you, <laughs> our book. The Bulletproof Dental Practice, which Peter and I wrote just for fun, has oh, more shit. reviews and more sales than his. <laughs> favorite, you know what my favorite thing is? Your book actually talks about how experience and team interaction is more valuable. Dwight, they're not mutually exclusive. Money. They're not. They, it's that is that, correct. It's then that why are you reading this? But you're saying that that is a requirement for culture. No, I didn't say it was a requirement. Not. I said is it was an augmentation. Oh that was my it. God, that was the this whole is so argument. good. By the way, listen to this augmentation. You, Craig, Craig listen to is this. In a different listen, squirrel. I'm in a different. No, just because the authors. This is the review of their book. Okay, what we while we would all love yeah. to sponsor employee it's guitar like lessons. One eleven at this point. Okay, whatever, guys. The point I'm trying to make is that the the audience. Okay, you guys suck. <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> I'm gonna do my own podcast. The fearsome onesome. Drown him out with music. Oh, we got you. We drowned you out. I felt like right. Showtime it's with funny. the Apollo. Yeah, you know, like the circus clowns come out. That was too fun, oh, everybody. We'll have to do out. it again soon. Uh, I love you guys. You know, that like, was fun. Grab you from the that side was of great. <laughs> <laughs> Showtime at the Apollo. <laughs> oh, All shit. right. That was fun. All right, guys. We'll, we'll catch Later, everyone guys. next time. Yeah, it was a great Bye, time, guys. <laughs>